Hello, my little witchlings. Marry me. I hope you're all having a great weekend. I hope you had a blessed Beltane as well. Okay, so tonight's video is going to be very famous Four Thieves Vinegar. Quick disclaimer, if anybody is looking for a recipe on Four Thieves Vinegar for health purposes, this is not the right video. This is for magical purposes, so <laughs> I'm going to save you a little bit of time. Hop on off and go search for these vinegar for medicinal purposes, okay? All right, that being said, anybody who stayed, great! <laughs> and I'm happy to have you here. All right, uh, you can quickly Google the lore um, about four thieves vinegar, so I'm not gonna try to bore you with too many of the details. I'll go through it pretty quickly. Okay, so 1700s, bubonic plague, also known as the Black Plague. And during that time, uh, places were quarantined, things like that, and there were four thieves, also they were brothers as well, were robbing corpses and, um, you know, their homes and graves themselves. And yet they didn't get sick. They didn't get the plague. It made no sense because of how highly, highly contagious it was. So... The war has it that, and there are some variations to this. One of them being that they simply soaked garlic uh, for an extended period of time into vinegar, and they doused their entire bodies with that, and apparently, like, tied something around their face. Um, am I out of focus, guys? It looks like I might be. I was. Sorry about that. Okay. Still getting used to this techie stuff. I, I had other people in my life that were better at it than I am. <laughs> so I'm doing it all on my own here now. Okay. So, uh, the other lore says that each thief brought one herb to the mixture that was soaked in vinegar. And they gassed themselves with that. So, do your own research, decide what you think, you know, might be more accurate, that's completely up to you. But back then, people thought it was magic. Well, we know how garlic has all of these antibacterial, antimicrobial um, properties to them. But that being said, nonetheless, now it is used so widely throughout witchcraft, hoodoo, folk magic, you name it, it is used. And I will go into the uses for it once I've shown you my personal variation on how to make it. Okay, so first you're going to need, very simply, a jar. Now, I found this gorgeous red one at the Dollar Tree, and I knew I was going to use it for this, because red, to me, represents power and protection. So, that's what I'm going to be using. <clears throat> but... I don't know if you can see, it has a pretty narrow neck to it, so it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to get all of your herbs in there, um, so if you can't do that, and also if you prefer to strain out the herbs, which I don't, but if you want to in the end, you can use a large jar of any sort, you can get big ones over the Dollar Tree, again, uh, anywhere, anywhere and strain them out and put them into something like this when you're done. Let this soak for at least a month. You want to make it on a waning moon if possible. Right now it is a new moon on a Saturday, which is perfect. So that's why I'm doing it tonight. Now keep in mind, what you see here, I do a lot of things off camera as well. So not only to, for the sake of time, um, I needed to empower each of the herbs, each of the ingredients that I'm using, and really be able to tap in, which I can't do if I'm on camera, and it would be boring for you guys. You know what I mean? So, all right, make sure no matter what jar or jars you are using, you cleanse them, okay? Make them your own. That's the whole point. So, you can cleanse them with water, um, mix with a little bit of Florida water, and leave it at that. Um, I like to do that, plus I like to use sage to smoke the inside and out, okay? But since I'm not using that, 
clear one. I'm going to focus on this one, okay? Okay, as far as the ingredients go, like I said, there are so many variations to this, guys, but one of the staples that I've noticed is garlic. So, I wanted to use five garlic heads for, or cloves, I'm sorry, for a reason. I took four, five pins, okay, with different colored tips to them. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to pierce the garlic is to help the juices um, kind of permeate into the vinegar. And also, I wanted to represent the four elements. I thought that would be a really cool way to incorporate that form of magic into this. So, a pierce one with a red pin for fire. I did one green for earth. Did a blue one for water. It was either pink or yellow, guys. So I chose yellow for air because I feel like yellow is a very happy, but a uh, happy color where people communicate well. Where I know blue is normally used for communication, but I feel like yellow sometimes can be used for that as well. But go with whatever works for you. You can use two blue. It doesn't matter. And then I wanted to use one that represented spirit. So I used white. Now, normally, um, just for demonstrative purposes, guys, I'll show you. Normally, I would pierce this horizontally. But doing so, I wouldn't be able to fit it into my red jar. So I pierced it vertically. Okay. Um, the next ingredient that I'm using that's also fresh is ginger root. I peeled it and cut up a few chunks. It smells really lovely. And I decided to use five pieces because I'm using, I'm making quite a bit here. I don't want the ginger to be super overpowering, but I do want the properties in there. Then the next fresh ingredient that, this is one you don't see in all of them, but I really wanted to incorporate it because it's really a go-to herb for me and pretty much all of my magic is rosemary which came from my own garden. I feel like anything that you can grow on your own just has that much more power. Um, you have your own connection to it. Okay, we've got those. Then, cloves. I'm probably going to add the majority of these because, I mean, you can see this is a pretty large jar. And I'll probably gift some of it to friends, you know, other witchy friends. The clothes. Then um, I see a lot of people using crushed uh, chili flakes. I wanted to go a step further and use the actual dried chili peppers. Because one of the purposes of Four Thieves Vinegar is protection. And if you want to come at me... You're going to feel the heat, baby. You're going to feel it. So that's why I added that. Ginger is kind of similar where you're going to feel the heat. All right. And then the last, whole peppercorns. You know, just whatever feels right to you. Now, keep in mind, what you're going to see on camera is very different. It, it, this isn't just all I do. I did a lot prior to this. I had my incense going, the right music going, my candles burning, which I still have burning right now. And I blessed and empowered all of these ingredients first. Because, number one, it would be really boring to you guys to watch all that. And <laughs> secondly, I just, I really feel it's important to tap in to the right energies to put the right power into this. Guys, this is no joke. This is a really old school recipe. This is not something to be messed with. It is, like I said, no joke. Um, okay, when it comes to the vinegar, you can use white vinegar if you're in a pinch and really need to make it, but let's be honest, guys, this has to seep for a good month. So if you can't wait an extra day to go to the store to get a different type of vinegar, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> um, 
Originally, apparently, uh, some of the lore that I have heard, I could be incorrect, but this is what I have heard, is a lot of people many, many years ago would take red wine and let it turn into vinegar. You know, have you ever had <laughs> opened a bottle of wine that wasn't supposed to age and you take a sip and you spit it out because it tastes like ass? Yeah. <laughs> that means it's turned to vinegar. But you could use red wine vinegar if that appeals to you. For me, through trial and error of what works best, um, I like to use apple cider vinegar. And if I'm making this for medicinal purposes, I'm definitely going to use apple cider vinegar. The last ingredient, well, there are actually technically two more, that I want to show you that I like to add. And they're optional. All these are optional, and you can just pick and choose here, guys. Pick and choose. A nail. Okay? I, uh, iron, steel, represents strength, courage. And another thing that this will do, if you add this to your fourth ease vinegar, and this is something I've learned recently, if someone is trying to figure out what you're up to in your witchy business, Mm -hmm. We all know people like that that shouldn't be up in our business, but they might be or definitely are. Adding a nail is a really wonderful way along with adding it to your garlic. These are the ways that we are going to shield our witchcraft and our thoughts and our magic from anybody who's trying to maybe read tarot on us do any type of divination like that on us. It, it will help to shield us, okay? I can't stress it enough that if you dabble in magic, even if it's fairly light, if you're just a dabbler, you need to just say, okay, I'm going to take a week and do nothing but protecting myself. Because you don't understand the risks yet. And... If you do happen to work in, you know, darker arts, I think anybody who has done so fully understands the importance of being heavily, heavily protected. And then, okay, so when I peeled my garlic, I like to save the peels and burn them. And I can use the ashes and all sorts of protective powders and things like that. Or if I'm cooking and I just, you know, feel like using the burner flame and I want to burn some just to add some protection to the room in the moment, I can. And I keep it in a little bowl. Um, so what I did was I took two larger pieces. You're going to want to write down whoever you want to protect in your home. That's in your home. Okay, Let, let's keep that clear. Uh, it has to be pe people that live with you in your home. So for me, obviously, I wrote down my name and my birth date. And the only other being living with me is my fur baby. So I wrote down his name. Okay, and we're going to add that to the bottle as well. And I, yes, I did show you the black peppercorns. Okay. All right. So let's get to mixing, guys. So I'm going to take off a little supper. I'm going to use a funnel. And I hope you can see this. I'm doing my best here. And we're just going to pour in this apple. I'm going to pour in. Let's see. How much do I want to pour in? I'm going to pour this apple cider vinegar in until, I don't know if you can see, until it's about there. Just for now. We're going to top it off, don't worry. But I want to see how much room these herbs take up. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, I blessed and empowered all of these prior to the video. So um, we'll just use the rosemary as an example for each herb. You're going to want to bless and empower in any way you see fit, whatever feels right in your heart. If you're of the Catholic faith, you know you can do it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. I bless and empower this rosemary too. Ba, 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 ba. Or, um, 
I consecrate now this rosemary to aid me in my magical rite of blah, blah, blah. Make sense? Okay. So I already did that to all those for the sake of saving time for this video, which I'm not good at doing. So, okay. I'm going to add each of the garlic cloves now. And I'm going to state my intention with each of them. <sighs> I add this clove of garlic to represent the element of fire. Let anyone that may come across me feel the heat of my wrath. I add this garlic clove to represent the element of earth. So that way I may feel grounded, centered, and prosperous. I add this clove of garlic that represents the element of water. So movement in my life will flow freely. Bad things will flow away from me and good things will flow towards me. I add this garlic clove to represent air so that I may communicate better and those that hear me may receive my words well. And lastly, I add this clove of garlic to represent the everlasting spirit. Okay, so we've got the five garlic cloves in there. Okay, now I'm just going to simply, because I already enchanted these, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> oh no! Guys, you know what? This is actually really funny. <laughs> Shit! Okay, well, that's okay. It happens. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to, you know, wait the apple cider vinegar off of the floor. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Screw it. This is what sometimes happens in magic, guys. We make messes, and you got to laugh it off. If I've learned anything about witchcraft, it's like if something happens, you laugh. Spirit doesn't care. They don't care if you're not staying super, you know in a, uh, a state of mind where you have to be super serious. It's okay to spill things. I'm clumsy. That simple. Okay, so let's get back to it, guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add <laughs> my ginger. I hope somebody found this amusing. Okay. Charging it with my tent quickly again. And add one. Two, three, four, five. Cool. All right, then I'm going to take quite a bit of clove. Clove is a very protective herb, spice, whatever. And my hands, because I'm making a big batch, I'm using quite a bit, but my hands are small. Quickly put in my tent once again. Protection. I'm going to use my funnel for that. And I just do not want to go through. feels right the amount until it feels right to you guys okay okay then um I don't have any like I couldn't find any basic latex gloves but let me tell you you do not want to touch these chili peppers if you have sensitive skin which I do um and just be careful if you do touch them wash your hands when you're done please for the love of god Wash your hands. <laughs> okay, one, 
these two. I want to put quite a few of these in here. <coughs> oh, God, they're making me cough. <clears throat> and the chili peppers, this is to help anybody that wants some F with you. They're going to feel the heat. They're going to feel it. That's what they're for. Um, while I'm doing this, I might as well explain. Um, this is a popular concoction, even just keeping your home, to ward off negativity, um, to keep away enemies. You can sprinkle some um, on your doorstep to keep bad people out. You can take, you know, a couple, just a couple drops, guys, because this is kind of potent stuff, um, and put it in your bath to cleanse away negativity. I really love using it that way. Um, it's great in separation jars. Great in separation and ammonia, you know, ammonia jars. Wonderful for those. Um, if you want to just use a drop or two in your floor washes, you know, to help sweep out negativity. That's awesome. And then my favorite way, I would say, you take some of this after it's steeped, and you put some in a smaller bottle, and you take a piece of paper and write your enemy's name on it nine times, or what's even better is something that you can link the enemy to, say, uh, you know, something with your DNA on it, um, something similar to that, uh, hair, nail clippings, blood, um, Something they've written on, something uh, they've touched, jewelry, anything like that. Uh, the list goes on and on. And you want to put some of it in a bottle with that. And then take that bottle to a running stream. And you want to toss that bottle, turn around, and walk away. And you do not look back. Okay? And be rid of them. That's for bothersome people that just won't leave you the fuck alone. You know what I mean? We all have dealt with that in the past. You know, this can even be used for difficult neighbors. You know, if you guys want me to do a video on the many ways to use this, I can. Okay, so I added quite a few chili peppers to that. Make it real hot. Again, black peppercorns. More heat, baby. Give me the heat. <laughs> And I'm not adding an awful lot. Like I said, just pour it into your hands until it feels like the right amount. And a little bit more. I definitely want that punch, that heat in mine. You know, um, because I do dabble in some dark art, so... I need to make sure I'm definitely 100% protected. Okay, and then, you know, you can use as little or... I I think using fresh rosemary is better. It's just my opinion. Let's see if I can stuff this bad boy in there. I might actually add another sprig of rosemary for my garden in that. But... Alright, now let's top it off. Oh, wait! I forgot the nail. So anybody wants to look into my witchiness, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want to pray over this one more time. There goes the nail. Now we're going to chop this off. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty in the bottle. Even, I wish this was, sometimes I wish this was a clear bottle so you could see how pretty this looks. With all the herbs floating in it. It's beautiful. Okay, there we go. Now, once the camera shuts off, um, I'm pro I might seal it with a candle. You know, put one on top. Let it drip down. Uh, that's an option that you have. And you want to keep this in a cool, dark space 
if you're in a major hurry, I guess you can use it in um, two weeks. But I would really, I'd really recommend you give it at least a month. Okay, guys. Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Uh, if you want to make fun of me for spilling things, go right ahead. I'm very used to laughing at myself. <laughs> it happens, you know. I uh, recently was doing a spell, he uh, a healing spell for someone, and uh, things caught on fire. Didn't go very well. <laughs> I almost burnt my eyebrows off. It was funny. Um, but anyway, guys. All right. So, can you see those herbs floating in there? Isn't that beautiful? So, you might, you know, if you're a witch that doesn't want people to know really that you're a witch, you might want to keep it in a, a pretty bottle such as this. And if anybody asks what it is, just say, oh, well, an old medicinal recipe you know something like that all right guys um i rambled on way too long spilled way too much and i gotta clean it now so <laughs> i hope you have a wonderful sunday because by the time this is uploaded it will probably it will be sunday and um yeah stay wicked as Ra white raven likes to say all right guys much love peace